Good evening, everybody. Well, this is the meeting of the Board of Civil Commissioners, February 21st. And I call the meeting to order at 6.30. And we'll have a roll call. Sandy Slavin. Peter Dunlop. And Jim Giberti. <clears throat> we have minutes from our last meeting of the 7th of February. I have reviewed them and um, and they're good. So <laughs> I make a motion to accept as presented. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Three zero Aye. zero. Citizens' participation, we have done, that's done. Sewer business. We get the FY19 CZM Coastal Resilience Grant Program Extension. want to feel that one to the guy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Um, that is in your packet. It's about the cost, extended cost of the grant to do the um, bypass. I've asked Mr. Kleeklamp to come in from GHD to explain to you what the cost override was. Uh, he's been in contact with the town administrator, CZM. Um, they actually had to vote on generating more funds from the state to complete the project, and which means that our match has gone up. So. Um, he can explain to you why that's happened. And basically, it's about a line stop that we have to put in, which is quite expensive, to stop the flow from coming back at the station as they do the work. It's not because he got a raise. He did get a raise, and he didn't bring any donuts or anything, so I gotta tell you, that's something you should consider. But nonetheless, I will have him explain it to you if, you, if, if it's okay with the board, and he can give you a, an explanation of what we're doing here. In spite of the fact that he didn't bring what he was supposed to bring, we'll allow him to. I I, I swear I mentioned it. I swear I mentioned it to him. I'm, you know, Obviously, I I'm sure he I did. did. I, I just, I just. Russ, you want to? <laughs> sure. Just a few handouts here. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Those aren't costing us extra, are they? Um, yeah, Those aren't costing us extra. I'll grab what man he's going. Because it's, uh, yeah, it's the uh, actual call. <laughs> he's he's going to hand one out. Thanks. Thank you. Is this the 19... Is this the 1954 picture on the front? I believe it's the 1938 photograph. The 38 one, okay. I just thought it was appropriate to, well, good evening, everybody. Uh, the Russ Klee here. the Narrows? I yes. believe it is. Yeah, that's it. it is, that's exactly where it is. Yeah. Wow. Greenbridge. Well, good evening, uh, my name's Russ Kleekamp. I'm an engineer with GHD, and uh, the two packages I handed out, um, this is basically a brief presentation to discuss uh, the cost override for the CZM project. Uh, what we are going to be requesting is uh, approval for additional fees of $13,450, and I'll go through and explain um, where that cost came from. So in this package here, yes, the picture on the front, uh, I believe it was the hurricane in 1938, but it serves as a good reminder as why why we're doing some of these improvements to the pump stations and, and this sort of an event. Obviously, it's, it's a lot of destruction, so having these bypass piping, uh, the by bypass fittings installed uh, is really something that's uh, gonna benefit the town. It's an element that's included in all modern day pump station designs, uh, but these stations were built back in the 70s, so they were not included. So if you go to the second page on the agenda, uh, I'm just gonna give a brief discussion on the project background, talk about the bid opening that we had for the two uh, bypass, bypass installations at Heinz Field and Cohasset Narrows pump stations, uh, the request for additional funds, and then we can have uh, discussion if it's warranted. So on the third 
page of the packet where it starts with the, uh, the heading of background. Um, this, and you don't have to, I don't expect you to go read this in detail, but this was the original scope of work for the CZM grant that we applied for. Uh, there were nine separate tasks involved with that, um, and at the far right you can see the total cost associated uh, with, each one of the t with each one of the tasks. The total amount of the project was $204,500 with a grant of $153,375 and a cash match from the town of $46,835. So if you go to the next page uh, with the title of bid opening, um, we had estimated the cost for the installation of the bypass structures at the Heinz Field and Cohasset Narrows pump stations at $70,000 each. Obviously, the one at Heinz Field came in much higher, or higher, at $125,900, uh, and Cohasset Narrows was slightly lower at $57,900. So if you flip to the next page, um, with the actual uh, bid costs uh, that, that we received that were over the estimates, it increased the overall project cost from the $204,500 to $258,300, or a difference of $53,800. Now the good news is, is that CZM will pick up 75% of that cost, uh, or $40,350. Uh, the town will have to provide, uh, if, if we approve it or accept it tonight, the town will have to provide a 25% match of that $53,000, which is where you get the $13,450. And if you'd like, um, you can refer to that individual handout I passed out. This is the budget breakdown, um, and it basically the top matrix indicates the original funds that were submitted with the grant, and the bottom matrix gives the revised numbers. Anything that's red is something that's changed, so you can just see what uh, the different costs are on that. So why, why are we coming now for these additional funds? We did an estimate, um, and, and we get this cost that is higher. Um, when we do this type of work at a sewer pump station, anytime you cut into a live force main, uh, one of the goals is to really minimize risk. It can be a potentially uh, high risk type of operation. You have to take a pump station offline. Uh, so when we were doing the research at the Heinz Field pump station, the 18-inch uh, force main that pumps out uh, has a high point that's about 4,000 feet away. So once you cut into that line, you get about 4,000 feet of 18-inch. If you do the math, it's roughly 50,000 gallons. But another unique item that we were not aware of until we um, started looking at a more detailed construction plan was the fact that the Depot Street pump station ties directly into the force main for Heinz Field. So if we were to uh, do this under a, a method where you drain out of the wet wells, you'd actually have to set, or you'd actually have to take both pump stations offline, which is something we really didn't feel. Um, there's just too much risk involved with it. They're both major pump stations. And um, we, came, we decided to use what's called a line stop. Basically what that is, it's a temporary valve that's cut into the pipe um, right at the location of the Heinz Field uh, pump station, and it eliminates all of that uh, drain down from the pipes. Bad part about line stops is that they do have a cost associated with them, so that's where that additional cost came from to put in an 18-inch line stop. Uh, but the good news is, is it will make the project exponentially safer, it will reduce the downtime of the pump station, um, and it can still be done in one night. It's not an extended duration of time. So just on the next page here, I just put a simple map uh, based off of a Google Earth, and you can just see the location of, uh, down towards the bottom of the page is the Heinz Field pump station, and you can see how long that force main goes all the way up to the uh, water pollution control facility, and then Depot Street does tie into that line. Now there is an existing valve on the Depot Street line, uh, but there was some concern about operating it. and say anything were to happen to that existing valve, if you go to close it or something breaks on it, then you're really uh, in, a, in a situation there. So again, by using the line stop, we can avoid having to operate any of the existing infrastructure that may or may not work properly. But there are some additional benefits of using the line stop. So if you flip to, I think we're getting close to the last page here. Um, but on the sh sheet that says, what is a line stop? When you cut into that pipe, it does pull a coupon of the pipe out or a sample of the pipe. So I know that this force main, I believe, was installed in the 70s, and there's some other force mains around town that are the same age. So this will give us a very 
clear picture of the condition of that pipe and what thickness is remaining and uh, give us a good idea of the, the condition of these pipes and um, once we get those, we can, we can do further assessment on them. You're only gonna have that in one spot, right? Correct. Okay. So it's not an overall, it's not a um, best case scenario. There is minimal uh, um, deterioration on the pipe coupon, which is a good thing, but if we do start to see if there is deterioration on it, it it's fairly probable that other areas of the pipe will have similar deterioration. Also, Mr. Chairman, one of the critical things is the unknown is if that pipe is concrete lined or not concrete lined. In the uh, scenario in the summary you got from Wright Pierce, if that pipe is concrete lined, the then the, quickly, more yes, quickly. it's quickly than the five years. So this is critical to know, because if it is concrete, then it changes our dynamics of the five year time that that's gonna fail, it could be sooner. So this is really critical I, to us. Let me understand. There is no record as to what type of pipe was placed in there? <clears throat> There's a record of, it's, it's um, uh, ductile 52, they believe, that's what it is, but there was lined and unlined, it could be ordered both ways. It was not I, indicated one way absolutely. or the other. It just says ductile iron, and so, Shame on um, that paper, paper I, trail. I talked to a gentleman that made pipe, and he said the higher likelihood that it is concrete lined, but this is a verification, so it's really critical for that coupon. So these, these pieces act as a temporary valve? <clears throat> Correct, and then once it's removed. Would we be better off going for the bucks and putting in valves? Would it at some point save us down the line? There's a collar. Head a line, one of the, or, or the other line? I, I, I don't know, it could be, it could be, I'd have to ask. I, I'm trying to look at, think of the advantage so close to the pump station, we're gonna have shutoffs and everything anyways. I'd have to look at the advantage of it. How close they're gonna get to the work, because I, I believe they wanna be as close as they can. And so I don't know of the advantage of having a valve there to shut it off, because you're gonna have valves for the Y and the force main anyways. You're gonna put new series of <laughs> valves there anyways that we don't have. But are you gonna have them on both, both, of this, both sides of the Y? Yes, we have to. We have to. And remember, this is the permanence. Part of this bypass is going to have two permanent valves. Oh, all right. In that's, place. All right. So, all right. That, yep. that, that, that's the point I was getting. Yeah. Correct. Right. Uh, just on the second to last page of the, the packet, these are just some images of what the line stop looks like going in. They range in size from, I believe, four inches on the low end up to the very large. Um, and the company that's going to be putting them in uh, is, they, they do them all up and down the, the uh, Southeastern Massachusetts are very experienced with it. In fact, I believe they also put some line stops in in the, in the basement, correct? We have a line stop put in by uh, South Shore Pipeline. And for clarifications, they're the only company in New England. When I was looking to have a line stop put into our uh, RAS line so we could fix the valve there, they're the only company. I found another one in New Jersey and one in Florida. And so in, 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 in reality, they are the only company. And so uh, they're really experienced and, and, and uh, they're good at what they do. And we have one still. We'll wrap it up tomorrow. If you want to come down and see it, it's in the basement where we've got our stopped, uh, our, our RAS pump, and you can see it operate. It's, it's pretty unique. And that'll be a 10-inch, so you can see the girth of it. Now the one we're going to do in, at, at uh, Hines is an 18-inch, and it's quite huge. So. Uh, that's where the costs start getting so you higher. Doing it in the basement where? At the plant in the operations building. We have a valve that we need to replace, and that line ties into the splitter box. There is no way to isolate that backflow. If we had taken that valve out, then all the flow coming to the plant would have come into the basement. So there's no way to replace that valve. It was pretty well, poor <coughs> planning. Into a pool. Yeah, it would have been an indoor pool and wiped out the basement would have been complicated. So we had to, and the only option was a line stop, or the, you know, because we have to minimize the risk and, and the flooding. So we have one presently there, and you, so you can at least see what it is, how it operates to give you some feel for what we're going to be doing in Heinz Field. So just to, in summary and in closing, the last page of the packet just kind of runs down everything uh, that I just presented. Uh, the request is for an additional $13,450 to satisfy the 25% of the overall increase of the 53,800. Um, several positives with putting in the line stop. I believe it's gonna help the project go quite smoothly and end up in a, a valuable finished product for the town, town to have. Um, so with that, I'll open it up to any questions, concerns, or comments. Where will this money come from, Alice? Uh, we can take it out of operations. 
for the FY19 budget. Yeah. So we're okay there? There's some room there. <coughs> All right, do I have a... What do you think, Sandy? Motion for or against this? I don't think we have a choice. I make, make a motion, we accept. Second. All in favor? All right. You got it. Thank you. You're just such a marvelous presenter. <laughs> Looks like you've been out in the weather today. Uh, well, it's the... Uh, uh, High blood pressure, I guess. Guy keeps me pretty busy, so. No. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, Ray. Thank Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you. That was even easier than I thought. Did we have a document to sign? Yeah, I've got it over here. Okay. You have an article for roof repair. We're going to present that. It's, oh, uh, it's not completed yet. Okay. Uh, it will be on the specially up till March 15th to get it there. I've sent a draft to Derek. Um, we'll revise it and figure out exactly what we're doing. I'll bring it to you next time and uh, okay. get me on your schedule for capital planning. You, I will do that. What was the estimated cost? We have it in here someplace. <clears throat> the. Uh, Estimates from last time ranged between uh, 118, which seems, uh, which is likely low, and uh, 292, with 209 being the middle one. And remind me, which building would this be for? The dewatering uh, plant, uh, a garage, and two, um, what were they? Um, uh, septage septage, septage buildings. buildings. Where the, uh, what? Septage buildings. I'm going to pay, I'm going to ask the questions. How long have you known you needed new roofs? As we've never seen this on the capital plan. Well, this, this was under the, the um, yeah, this, we've known we needed roofs probably three or four years ago. Because remember, we started with the one on the ops building. They all were coming up. That goes way back to the ops building, ops buildings and others. Okay. It was never specific, so yes. So a year ago, we had it inspected, and it's leaking like a sieve. So we got four. One is real bad, and the other three are just okay. leaking. I was just surprised so. that we've known it. It just it hasn't been included honest. in the capital. I was. Yeah, we, uh, yeah. years ago, because when we did the ops building, we submitted all of them. So I, I think the conflict with me, the conflict was is that the capital planning wants it annually, and I gave a five-year. This one, this one, this one, and this one, and the capital plan doesn't recognize that. They recognize the uh, actual I year. I have a capital plan that goes up five years yes. based on your documents that you you passed to us. So, so I mean, it was just we, we did the roof four years ago, the ops building, and before that okay. we talked about all the roofs. So I, uh, you know, I should have come every year and said, okay, this year we're doing this one, yes, and so we'll be more diligent. But I did a long term, and I apologize Without that, for that. We, there is no way to understand how much capital funds you need to keep that plant up and running if we don't, the town doesn't know about it. I, I want to be perfectly clear. We, I give you a CIP was a hundred million dollars, and that's not a joke. I will be more specific on a five-year plan as we go for the capital plan. Okay. But I want to say that that's no joke. That's Sorry, real money, to, real dollars. I had to put my capital planning hat on. That's Sorry. fine. That's fine. That's, that was a couple of weeks ago. Oh. Okay, we sat there. Uh, we're going to have an article for pipelining also. Ellis? Um, I have a thousand feet of eight inch pipe um, okay. going into the <clears throat> Smith pump station inch, right. okay. Smith. That's for 300,000. And I've uh, <clears throat> talked to you a little bit about putting that on our capital planning. And that's in the FY20 budget. Are there other lining projects that we need to 
Wait, there's others to consider. Capital planning. There is, and we'll get them all the next. I'll get them to Alice to get to you folks for the capital planning, so you'll be you'll know. There's, we've got plenty of exposure. We had talked about previous the five million dollars. We're going to do other lining. Those are still on the on the table. We still have the t on the table the uh, force main. But this specific is the thousand feet of asbestos that goes through the marsh, entering into the Smith's pump station along with. That's so, right. Okay. So this yeah. is coming. So that's from this specific. So that's so to get specific. That's what this is for. And that's that aquatic safe lining to do. So that's coming from the buildings on Swiss, homes on Swiss Beach through the marsh to the Smith. Correct. It's not from Smith out to the road to. No, that's the force main. No, this is everything coming in and that, that pipe goes but through the marsh. we know we have more work there to do, but this is to focus on that one area in yes. Swiss Beach. Yes, it's the most vulnerable right now. And we're trying to do the most vulnerable with the limited funds we have. We'll, that is the and most. You, and we know you are working on a priority to list so we would have some idea of A, B, C, D. Absolutely. Going forward. So I know the two of you are working on Absolutely. that. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> And <clears throat> I think there's a good time to throw it out. Well, is there anything else in the FY20 budget capital for it other than this 300000 Well, I was suggesting yes. that I, on my superintendent's report, I was going to give it to Mr. Bailey and have him go over the budget Coming. entirely. Right. And so any questions yeah, the board sure. may have, it would probably be the time to get it out and he can explain to you exactly. Hmm? Yeah, I'm going to do that right now. All right. Yeah, that's... We may as well go over the budget that uh, we have put together. That Ellis has put together with Thank you. Guy's blessing. Thank you. I think. <clears throat> you, know, you guys are minute to go over that front page anyhow. So Guy and I went through the budget and uh, I've worked with Derek to sharpen numbers and make sure everything's right. I changed the presentation a little bit, you know, so five pages. You'll know what tab you're on in the lower left footnote. First one is summary, expenses, expenses, uh, direct uh, reimbursements to the town and then capital projects is the last page. On the summary, um, same as last year, we start with rate payer revenue. That's roughly EDUs times the 626. Septage and grease is a, uh, an estimate based on prior years. Uh, born capital is a, is a hard number. And the um, born IMA is, is a bit open, but based on prior years, we're, we're working through that still. Uh, betterment, betterment reserves is uh, coming in from rate payers and a little bit from uh, a, a capital um, account that kicks in a little extra to uh, make the bond payments when necessary. And I can explain how that works. Uh, giving us total re revenue of 8.2 million, uh, we tend to pull out the um, transfers to the town of 9.52, uh, 900 52,000, giving us a uh, gross revenue of 7.2, almost 7.3 million. <clears throat> In the expenses section, operations and maintenance, it's about 3.7 million. Capital expenses, we've got lined up uh, one, about $1 million. Uh, the rest are numbers from, from finance, uh, Mr. Foster, uh, betterment um, debt to the bond payments, principal and interest, uh, non-betterment debt, principal and interest, and some other small debts that uh, that get paid. Now you're both you're both aware that this the betterments, that's a wash item. So the betterment bond payments will equal the um, the betterment and betterment reserves. That um, if you add those two up, it's 1.3 million. <clears throat> the next uh, page is payroll. That's roughly in line with last year, uh, plus me. <clears throat> the next page is our operating expenses. 
page three. Uh, all of this I went through and um, a variance report and um, tied it all plus a little inflation to the, the 2018 um, actuals and then talked to Guy and he said this was a one-time event in here or um, that's a little low because something's coming up there. So then Guy uh, pushed these numbers around a little bit to give us uh, an operating expense budget. Is there anything in that, uh, that list that interests you? I, could, I the, just got a question for Guy. Uh, the hey Guy, the sludge is... Go ahead. Reading this. No, go ahead. I want to go. To, I, sludge disposal number that you've got in the budget. Mm -hmm. Is that close to what you think it's going to be this year? Yes, barring any unforeseen. Nothing. Not planning on raising the rate again? No, because we're under contract. Um, there is a, a index um, accelerator, but that's included, so they can't go any higher than the index, and so we don't expect it to be any higher. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, that was the number that scared me the most, I think. Because mm, there's a lot of unknowns there. Good, that's a good, yeah. good point. There's so many unknowns with sludge. Excuse me, any idea when is it the Cape Town, the Cape, the town of the Cape will have the capacity of taking our sludge? I, I don't know. It's it, Things are dragging on longer than we anticipated. There's a couple going on down the Cape that we, oh, yeah, the sure. Bourne was one we thought would be up and running by now. Okay, but it's still in our radar to keep track Absolutely. of Absolutely. Absolutely. So right now we yes. have to drive this thing to Connecticut? Went to, uh, to Rhode Island, to Woonsocket, Rhode, Rhode Island. Okay. In case something else comes up. Okay. 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 The next, uh, the next section is all debt again, and, and that uh, ties straight to the, the, the summary page. So we've gone through that. The next page are our transfers to the town. So the town provides us with um, valuable services, which are estimates like audit, um, technology, Matt takes care of servers, uh, the treasurer collector's office um, organizes our bills and collects all our money and chases down bad debt. Municipal maintenance fixes uh, trucks, is it? They do vehicles, they, yeah. they do the vehicles, yes. Um, and there's some assessing functions, um, general administration, accounting. We use a good bit of accounting. Municipal maintenance, Minis municipal maintenance we have uh, uh, vehicles. They repair our vehicles. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, yes, they do. Uh, they do. So that's a good rate compared to the, the Dodge or Ford dealer. A um, question. Yes. Where uh, <coughs> you go to municipal maintenance to fuel your vehicles up? That, that's a direct payment that comes in our, in our budget. We have fuel. That's a direct payment. We pay them directly. You cut a town. check to the town of where, from the from water pollution control facility directly to the town of Wareham for the fuel? Yes, we pay for fuel, yes. As opposed to budget transfer. Well, I, when I say, yeah, I, I, let's be clear. I'm sure that Judy does. We get the bill from, from uh, municipal maintenance. I sign off on the bill. Okay. It's processed. And also. So okay, my so point just, is, yes, we cut a check. Maybe not it's physical. It's included in but the operational yes. cost? Is that yes. where that fund, that yes. expense is? Yeah, that's, yes, that's it's on the okay. gas Gasoline. and diesel. Send the vehicle out. Yeah. Okay, this is thank you. Mm -hmm. It'd be like going in a gas station, and they get it at a, at a better rate. Uh, below that, uh, more, most of these are estimates again. The audit, uh, insurance, those are hard numbers. I got, uh, I got something uh, telling me what my rates would be this year. Uh, legal, another estimate we use, the legal, a reasonable amount. Um, Below that, I um, re-estimated or got hard numbers for health and dental. Uh, that actually came down a bit. Uh, retirement went up a good bit. That's where most of the increase is this year. Workers' comp went up uh, a good bit, uh, which didn't surprise me. I thought that the 16,000 or 14,000 we had last year was too low. Leona is another retirement, and it went up. 
FICA is a hard calculation based on uh, wages. So it comes in at 952. Last year was uh, about 900,000. By searching for hard numbers, it went up a little bit. Now, um, typically in the town, isn't the general budget for the town including this expense under the town umbrella as opposed to directly to a department? Does that make sense? Other departments aren't um, aren't like us, so okay, the so municipal maintenance doesn't have this in their the budget. For the school department, because all those this, this type of expense you have here is covered right. by the town, right. but because um, we are a revenue producing, we're able to with, cover with the our school. Cost. If we charge them for their health insurance, we'd yeah, be giving them more money and taking it right back, and, yeah. and it, it okay. wouldn't make sense. Whereas we take money in from the outside. Uh, as an enterprise fund and then pay for the services we use. Okay, which is different as than the rest of the department. As an enterprise fund, we're basically a standalone operation. Okay. So we have to pay for what we get. Uh, do. And, and which is why we have a percentages of the services given from the town. Exactly. And there's a whole book of law and regulation that, that keeps these numbers fair. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> the next page is capital. A uh, guy can probably explain them a little better than I can, but uh, we've got two coolant compliant generators that will be moved uh, on a roof or on a platform to make them storm resistant. Um, these probably came up for the FY20 as three generators, but two of them weren't able to be just swapped out because they're water cooled and uh, they won't fit in there, they need to be raised. So these are uh, fairly expensive in comparison to what they would have been had we just done a direct swap. So those are two, 250,000 a piece, we believe. <clears throat> a replacement of 38 manhole covers on Route 28. <clears throat> the manhole covers are roughly $450 each. We uh, have estimated $610 for um, Installation and repair. We didn't lift up every single cover, stop traffic, lift. It. So there, there's some unknown there. But some of them will be a direct swap or close to a direct swap, and others will be. It will need some some repair. What, excuse me. You said Route 28. Is that just on Route 28, or is it 28 and 6 also? Six and twenty-eight, because you're yeah, right. So six and twenty-eight is. They're going to do the rehab. That is that is correct. We're going to do it at the same time. That's a little rehab. Okay. Yes, and that's why it's on the budget. That that rehab is coming okay. up real quick. Sorry. Right. So yes. Of Sorry about that. What happened with the, the lady getting killed with the, the sewer cover? Who's liable after these people replace them? Into the mic. As far, I, I, that's a good question. I, I, um, the state has requirements for these manhole covers because I believe the state owns that highway presently. Um, so there's a, the state puts out specific specs for them and then we got to follow them. So the liability, I, I don't, I can't answer that. It may be the state, but they, we own them, it may be us. So that is why we're putting bolt down and spring loaded so they'll be safe. There's no way these covers will fly off. So minimizing our responsibility, I'm going to bolt them down. There was no way that one was going to fly off and kill the lady either. No, that wasn't a bolt down. See, that was a standalone. We're actually going to have these. They're going to have a hinge. They're going to lock. The hinge is going to lock. And then they're going to be bolted down. And that's very that's a new design in the last five or six years you'll see them. Previous, they just sat there. So at, over years of traveling, they rock and yeah, wear the metal. And then that. they flip all out. All I'm concerned about is are we liable if that comes off? For any reason. I don't know. We we have them now. Are we liable? The ones now are shaky. So if we're liable, we've got a great risk right now. So we need to replace these. I, I kind of that's a question for legal. Uh, how that would go, I, I can't answer it. It's a state highway. It's we have an easement for these uh, maintenance easement for these. Right. So yeah, a couple of we've actually welded down. I want to know who if if yeah, I, I think the short if, answer if, is if, they'd if, sue if, everyone. If, if yeah. we are liable, <laughs> right. we want a bond from whoever these people that are putting them on so that they, their insurance covers. <clears throat> the bolts loosen up for any reason at all, that cover comes off. I, I don't want it to fall on us. The installer, the, the construction company, would probably not be responsible for that. There'd be a manufacturing defect, so I'm, I'll, let's see if there's warranties and things of that sort. 
but I can't answer that. It's a common problem throughout the world, the country, the world, actually. So yeah, we're trying to put out the best technology we can to make it as safe as we can. I'll have to talk to the Mr. Bowen about liability. So I can't answer that question, but it's a good question, and we should find out. The next item is uh, repair of 10 manholes. Um, we believe they're going to be at $5,000 a piece to repair. Uh, are those specifically identified, Guy, or? Uh... We have uh, Hampton Beach. We also, when we do um, the pipe lining, it did not include manholes. There's a few manholes coming into Swiss Beach that we have to do leaking like a sieve. So we're going to do, th I think there's four there. We've got two in Ansa to do. We've got one in Indian Mountain Beach to do. I've got a list of them, um, and I'll give you the list. But there's 10 that'll leak. There's, there's more, but. 10 that are leaking really bad that we're trying to stop now. So, so uh, I'll bring a list to capital planning. Of the 10 okay. that you're talking about at SWIFT's, Eight. of the 10 that you're talking about at SWIFT's, uh, part of the project that we're about to undertake? No, it's it's ahead of it. The further down? Yes, right. it's ahead of it, so. Uh, the next are grant matches, um, one for 82,000 for uh, the Cape Cod Canal outfall project. And the second one was uh, with CZM for 68,000. So you're looking for 2020, 1,050,000 for your capital. Yes, ma'am. Which is a little bit of an increase over last year. I think it was in the 950 range. Well, I have questions, but I'll wait for capital planning. But could you submit them in writing so I can give them to, we can go over them and I can make sure he gets the right answers. I give you the five-year plan where everything says ongoing and I don't see any of the ongoing in your list. What's, on, what's ongoing? I, I, some of the ongoing Let's may be see. completed. Pump replacements, generators, which you are doing too. Pump replace. Pump stations, aeration tank structure and valves, replace clarifiers, mm. ke uh, kettle stations, pump replacements, those have been identified you as ongoing to be done every year, and I just, other than the generators, don't see it on this current list. We, uh, we haven't bought them forward, they're there. I can show them to you, but what's happening is, I said to you a long time ago, every time we plan something, something becomes a higher priority. Pipe, we ne if you look, so that, that those are I still say, ongoing. I'm not, I'm but they're not, other than the generators, they're not part of your 2020 plan. That is correct, okay. I, I'm not gonna bring them in. I'll just defer them out. Okay. Uh, do you have questions on the budget as a whole? We'll be taking it to Finance Committee next week, I think. The 28th. 28th. That's next week. <laughs> next week. Is it this week? It's close. Oh, I, I know next it's. Week, yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Let well, me have it, and I'll take the Thank comments. You. Thank you. There's a lot of work to. Tie this up. Yep, it took some time, but it'll go faster next year when I know more of what I'm doing. Tie up uh, less of guys' time with it. Okay, do I have a motion to accept the budget presented? So I make a motion to accept the budget as presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's three zip zip. I owe you an answer on borrowing generically. Um, I did talk to Mr. Bowen. Um, he believes legally you could borrow, but practically it, it'll never work. So if we wanted to borrow five or $10 million for projects uh, upcoming in the next year or two, um, he doesn't believe it would get through capital planning, uh, not capital planning, but the FinCom, the Town Administrator, Boris Selectman, so, although legally it probably can be done, uh, also the underwriting would be more difficult. Um, the banks want to know exactly, the bond writers want to know exactly what you're doing with the money, not um, improving the plant would be generic, but uh, lining this pipe, replacing that pipe is, is uh, the specific information they'd that, be looking for. That's what they'd be looking for for the bonding. So legally, yes, practically, it's, it's not really going to work. Okay. 
do we have any action that has to be taken because we're not borrowing the five million that was approved at last town meeting? <clears throat> I did not see that on the current town meeting warrant. I was told it was going to be there, the re rescinding that. Um, it was not, not borrowed, there. it can't be borrowed um, due to the order of funding on, on but don't last we have year's to article. remove it from the books or something because we've identified we will borrow? Well, I'm going to have to ask, Mr. Foster, but I, I was told that it, it was going to be there, and then I read through it, and it wasn't. I was I surprised to I not see it. I was surprised to find it also missing, yes. I didn't see it there. It was on the Maybe it's on the special. Maybe it's on the special, because I thought there were some other loans that had been approved uh -huh. and not spent, and therefore those balances had to be adjusted on our books. So Maybe John is doing it in special. Yeah, I can ask him. Okay, uh, <coughs> guess we'll cover there. Uh, Guy, you have a report? No, I have nothing. I work on the budget. I thought the budget would be a good place Not for a the problem. report. How are we doing on that priority list? <sighs> Refining is, has been tough, but we're getting there. It's, uh, it's okay. um, yeah, uh, uh, we're close. Uh, we're bantering it and but it, it sounds like we're not going to be able to do it the way we want it. I don't believe so. I think it's got to be specific. And so um, I, I think what's driving right now for me is that coupon. Uh, if it's concrete, that changes the game on that force main and that priority becomes even higher. So our efforts will have to be to get that done. And if we're going to do uh, narrows, we might as well do Heinz because their sister in the coupon will give us that information. So that acceleration is scary. So. Can say that about everything. It just yeah, no yeah, place yeah. To stop. <laughs> I, I, I know. And the, the as I was talking to, to Eric is that I mean to Ellis is and I call you Eric. I apologize, but to Ellis is that there's so many things to do and limited funds. And how do you do it? We can't borrow a hundred million dollars. I'd love to say I'm going to borrow bond out a hundred million dollars for the next 20 years and get everything done. Just have at it, and that's that's would be nice. But that's not going to happen, and, and we also have to consider the ratepayers, and there's so many considerations. But for me, the 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 priorities of things that have to be done, and right now the force main comes to the top, only because if it does fail, the consequences will bankrupt us, and that's what scares me. I, I look at Plymouth and Nantucket as an example, and it bankrupt them. So that because Why do you of acceleration, say that? I, I, I totally agree with that. Me. But at the same time, with all the water that we're infiltrating. Scary. Save money if we get that done. So, you know, you, you're right. This this past weekend, I, 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 it, there's we, no end to where you can spend it. It, it can't. We were pumping. We pumped fifty thousand gallons of flow on Saturday. We pumped twenty six thousand gallons on um, uh, Sunday, and we pumped twenty thousand gallons Tuesday because there was a backup in Swiss Beach and the INI was so great that we couldn't keep up with it. We had to pump it and we had to bring in a jet rod to clear, a special jet rod to clear a line. So tell me about the flow. It's extraneous, so it's, it's, it's crazy. So What's the level of lagoons right now? Well, I'm keeping them down. They're good. We've been pumping like crazy. We've been pumping like crazy. So they're they well, they're we're the prepared. Moon tides and they had all the rain. Yeah. And we're prepared for the spring because the spring's going to fill them both up. But it's staggering what we got coming in. So yeah, you're right. I mean, there's so many pipes that need to be fixed. We possibly can't fund it all. And so trying to prioritize it, saying okay, this one is crazy. So we did it by the the areas that got the greatest flow. And now we got to hammer it down to a specific line because I can't do an area. I can only do so many lines in that area. So to drill it down and be comfortable with that drill and say this is a higher priority, it's it's a it's a good exercise. And and then well, where does Onset, Onset uh, Beach area fit into your priority scheme? The pri it would be second. It'd be the Force Main. So and then Swiss Beach. But I got to tell you, in the Onset, the North Boulevard pump station is taking the most water, which is 13th and 12th and East Central and you know in, in East Boulevard. That's taken the second most water in the town. The numbers are staggering, and that's all clay pipe that swims. We dug into that, and the pipe is literally swimming. And clay is four foot sections. No more connections. That's that entire area. And so we're trying to hammer which is one gets all more. Reliable? It is. We just got to identify. I would love to say 
reline all of the North Bill, Bull, uh, Boulevard catch area. And then we got a line coming from Sunset Island and, 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 and uh, in the marsh that is, that is leaking like a sieve. And so that one has to be done. And, and then of course the Onset Pier, and then of course Point Independence. Those are all really in trouble. And then Indian Mountain Beach got one across the, right in the water, that's in trouble. Well, it's most staggering. Most of those have nothing to do with the sump pumps like we have in Swiss or Hampton. That's right. That's right. Now, I'm sure there's some pumps, but the but flow isn't. But not the volume absolutely. that we have in those absolutely. two locations. So to prioritize them, so if you're saying we've got a million, that's not a whole lot. If we've got two million, you know what I'm saying? So it's okay, where's the best, like this budget 2020 is, where's that best 300,000 going we'll to go? We'll forward to so your so it's priority <laughs> list. We'll give you that. It's, it's, it's a work. It's, it's a work. It's one, two, three, not one A, two B, C. One A, B, two C. I'm going to go one A, B, C, one D, star, E. One two star, two A, B, C, D, E. Three A, B, C, D, E. That's all. I'm going to handle it. There's only 26 letters you can get under that number one. You know, uh, that's, that's probably how it's going to be because they're all important and I don't to know. To the point, do we just roll a die and say which one do we work on next because yeah. they are so bad. I'm looking at flow to get some kind of basis. I'm like, okay, what's the flow? Yep. And then what's the consequence? If I lose that line, yep. it's a gravity. What is the consequence? So you got the estuaries, things of that sort become higher because the estuaries are pretty critical. And so all that's, it, that's what it's coming down to. What's the risk? If this House? They're all going to go, but which one's going to be the most cost? How the update on the project now in Swiss, from the Swiss Beach So we, the company that's doing the actual lining is hung up in Washington, D.C. because of the storms. They'll be in town next week. We'll go we'll bow back at it. Okay. Is it everything cleaned or not yet? No, we stopped cleaning because it's going to get dirty again. We, as we're cleaning, we're waiting for the trucks to come behind us. They called and said, oh, no, we're not going to make it. we got to delay us a week. Okay, so. so we suspended the cleaning. Then once we're back on schedule, we'll start cleaning again so they can come behind us instead, and let, instead of letting them get really uh, dirty again. So. The walking trail is all cut out and pretty now. It's a so nice trail. To go. It's a nice trail. It's all muddy. I'm glad. I'm glad. I see yeah. you put it down a tremendous amount of ply score planks. In, planks to keep it from going <coughs> 18 inches into the mud as we're opposed trying. to six. <laughs> yeah, we're trying. It's it's an art, and we still have a manhole we can't find, and and we've we've done everything and under the garden. Don't under look the garden. anymore. Will you? We'll have to fix it. <laughs> it's, it's not it's under a, the pool, is it? <laughs> No, it said some late. They built a beautiful it's garden at the pool. end, and we got to go tear it up. And uh, and I've got to sit and talk. And we've had a hard time catching them. And it's I think it's just Sunday mornings, and I got to get out there and tell them what we're going to do. Oh, how's the project for the pump stations at the industrial park? How's that moving? They, uh, they're they're doing pretty good. Uh, matter of fact, oh, that's not Russ. I'm sorry. I apologize. Thought Russ was still here. Um, that's doing pretty good. Matter of fact, that we've got two more plans to solidify and. Okay, and so okay, yeah, that's ongoing, and that's open. that's pretty extensive because they're doing all of that infrastructure, including the three pump stations and all the lines in between. So they, they, that's 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 doing quite a bit. And homes not connected to sewer lines. Are we I, close to doing uh, registered done nothing, letters? I got. I've done nothing with it. I've okay. done nothing with it. I, it's been crazy. I know you've been busy, but did you have a chance to do anything with the marinas? No, I, I did a okay. couple phone calls, but I haven't got out there and verified. And they all keep records. There's Every, seven pump out stations listed in town hall. I, I, I'll get them. I, there's a couple I don't, Gary has a couple. Yeah, that, I there's one at, um, I think there's one at uh, your place, uh, Tempest Knob, I think there's something there. I'm not, they were supposed to, I'm not really sure, but I am told. A little blue building? I, I, I'm, I gotta look at it, I don't know, but. I told you I have no, I think there's a sign saying, here's a, I don't think there's a pump out station okay. in Tempest so Knob. Either. I'll ask Gary, but, sure there isn't. but I am told everything in all of this town, I'm told it goes through Gary. I'm not 100% sure. So I'm gonna to go to Gary, because Gary should have everything. He should be full aware of that project. So Gary's the guy I'm gonna sit with. Does the business some, know they're about to get hit with an EDU? I, I, you know, I, no. Well, no, before okay. we do that, I think the right thing to do is it would be the next billing cycle and then we'd send out a letter. I mean, that's we wouldn't do it, you know, as much as it, you know, it would be so probably. It's good. We just got our sewer bill, so it would be the next set of bills. Next billing come cycle. Up in six months. Yes, okay. the next billing cycle. So <laughs> we have time to get out, bill, uh, you know, yeah, letters. We'll talk and about it and say why they shouldn't, why they don't need it, or why they're not doing sewer or whatever. So it's a, a cost. chance for them to <coughs> react to it as opposed to we'll give them a heads up before they get the bill. And I got to tell you, should get a heads up before they get the bill. Yeah, absolutely. We'll just send them a letter because it's fair to say, hey, listen, we're going to raise. Stuff. 
you know, absolutely. And, and when we did our research, it's not unheard of. That was our concern, is it unheard of? It is not unheard of because it's treating a product. So the state is saying it's not unheard of, and that, to me, was critical. So you got a little wiggle time? Yes. Okay, new business. We did GHD up front early on, so he's done yes. it going. Well, Swiss Beach sewer connection? Um, zero one. Swiss Beach Road. And they came in front of conservation. Down Swiss Beach Road, first property on the right. See all that dirt and all that mound there? So, so take a left on a Swiss Beach Road coming from the tunnel. Leave here tonight, go down, take a left on Swiss Beach Road. As soon as you take a left, look to your right. You'll come across, on the right there'll be, it looks like a dirt road and a pounds, piles of dirt and looks like somebody's working in there. Is that by That's Brown's, the lot. Is that by Brown's yes. Lane or whatever? It, it actually is between Spitz. That's Danny. Up to the mic. I forget, it's being sold. I think Mr. Oh, oh, oh. The very first lot on the corner. Yeah, as soon as you get up, it's... Yeah, that's Dinkus. And, and there's a lot there, and it's being handled by Mr. Perry, the attorney, who called me, but it goes from Swiss Beach Road. Well, I'll show you here. It goes from Swiss Beach Road right to Brown Street. So my original proposal was going to Brown Street because it's quite unique. It's going to cost a ton of money at Swiss Beach Road. So I said, go to Brown Street. He said, conservation has some reservations. They didn't want to go that way. So I told him, okay, he can come up front. So it's, it's going to be quite a reservation. When did they come before us? I don't know. I think just... I don't, rem I don't remember the project. The conservation has some issues, so this is, I'm going to try Okay, so it's possible the Mr. Prichette had some issues because so this, this has is not Brown, come to I mean, Swiss Beach Road, this is Brown Street, um, and this is the lot right here. See the proposal? And the lot goes like this. And so see, Swiss Beach Road, is, I mean, Route 6 is here, you take a left, there's a little something here. The side Cranberry road, Cottage? That's over here. No, that's oh, over, that's here. over there. But that, but that's sort of the for sale sign. Yeah, there's something and, and, there. And, and that's that. The empty and, lot. And, and the back biggest there, empty uh, lot. Radio tower. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so. But this is there's a dirt road and there's miles of dirt right now. Yeah. So, so well, I don't know. This is the the person who lives across the street owns this property. Okay. So that's the lot that this gentleman. So you can see that we're going to cut into that 21 inch line. Put because you're going to duplex. Put a manhole and then feed it in, feed it there. This is the what he's proposing. Um, and so, because this is quite deep, originally we weren't going to do that. We were going to go out the back with, he was going to go out the back with a small pipe along here, and that, we could just know what he could do that. I think there's a wet right here that we're concerned about. That. Now, this has not come before Conservation Commission, so you must have only talked with Mr. Fischett on this. I have no idea. Yeah. He said that conservation would not let it go that way. That would, then that would be Mr. So I, I, so I said I'd bring it to the Super Commission. Is he's got to cut into that 21 inch line, <coughs> and we're going to line the pipe. But one of the questions we asked in that meeting is, can we cut into it once we line it? And they assured us that's not a problem. So he'd have to put a collar around that, cut into it, which is going to be costly for him because it's going to be deep. Is this a proposed collar? Yes, not that oh. yet. He's going to build it. It's a duplex. I think I've seen it. Because well, it, it, <laughs> it isn't there. It isn't there. That is, is what It'll this be there when you go home. <laughs> yeah, they build today. Standing my cousin. So were they? Gonna I think he lost the park across the street. Nope. You want to talk to the? No. Okay. So that. So what we're trying to do is, he needs permission to tie into the sewer. I see no problem with it. It's just going to cost him a ton of money. Uh, one of the things he asks is, you know, can we get him to reimburse him as eighteen? I said there's no provision for it. I would run it by the board, but there's no provision because this is gravity. And in our policy, we don't speak to gravity at all. I said if it was a development, we've done like on Hathaway, but he was doing two lots, and he was putting a extension in the road that benefited us because he moved the pipe down the road. <coughs> this is just a straight tie. So, you know, that's something the board can consider to give him credit for his cost. And it's a duplex. It's a duplex. So it'll be two EDU. Two EDUs. So that's the board to consider if you want to give, it's $18,000 to put that line in to us for a sewer development fee. He wants to credit that towards the construction costs. And I said, that's, I don't have a problem with that. But we do make an exemption. It's like I said, a pathway. We, but, but that was for everybody's use. This is just a hit. What's gravity at that point? That's gravity, yes. Pure gravity. So there's no policy for gravity. So, and, and then that's about where Ripley's is. Yes, yes. It comes this way here. We'll go down. So this gravity line comes this way here. And he's got a collar. It's quite a job because it's a 21-inch pipe. And, um, he's got to dig around it. He's got a collar around it. He's 
drill into it to put a tie, so it taps it and kind of just to grab it. It's in, and it's, it's deep. Where, where is the pipe? Is the pipe right down the middle of the street? Pretty much, pretty much. That's a heck of a cut. Yeah, it's a heck of a cut. It's got details. And that's, and that's right where we're going to be lying. And we're, I, these are going to be, this was supposed to be in the spring or summer. <coughs> we'll already be lying. <coughs> And that's why one of the questions. So you'll, be, you'll be cutting into our newly lined pipe? Yes, you will. If we're going to let him do it, why wouldn't we want him to cut in beforehand? I, 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 I would suggest it to him. I mean, if, because I, because I think the problem, to be frank, I don't, I, I don't know the deal, but he hasn't closed on it. And so once he gets permission, he's probably putting all his ducks in a row. Yeah. And once he gets all his ducks in a row, he'll close the deal on a piece of property, I'm guessing. So well, how I can recommend that he does it right away. I mean, how many lots are there? I'm not so sure. I, I think I'm it's just one while, while they're lining in that, would it be us to or well, we have to dig up and get it? No, forget it. Yeah. 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 That's quite a bit of dig. Right. Well, right. that's right. a tremendous amount of wetland in there. Yeah, I don't think there's there's not a lot of building. Would, it's I not a lot of buildable space in that, that lot because of the amount of wetland. Yeah, if we do something to allow him to yes. do it, it, it does it now before we line. I, I'll make that suggestion, but it, uh, yeah. the contract assures me that when he cuts it, it's not going to bother him at all. Okay. That's one thing we have, we have yeah. first because we need to protect ourselves yeah, totally and be assured that right they can cut into it once we line it. So that's where that came in. So I'm confident about that. Um, I just. The only thing for me is the cost. It's going to cost a lot of money, but I don't know if the board should say that we'd absorb that by giving back a super development fee. Mm -hmm. That's the only decision the board, other than letting it tie in, it's not going to be a stress to the system. I mean, it's already stressed out, but, um, and we have some sure, that's why I put manholes to minimize I and I, but the, he wants, he's asking to get credit for the 18,000. Use that money towards this construction cost, and there's no policy for it. Totally but don't we charge everybody bitumen if we they're tight? So it's something that we always do is we charge person, the, a property owner, a bitumen. So I'll, I'll be clear. If you look at the whether they tie in or not, they're charged a bitumen. Absolutely. Has he been charged a bitumen? No, because, because he, there's he never been a home lateral. Okay, so there was never one. Never a okay. Yeah. So when we do a project, we look at billable lots. If they're billable and we go to the building commissioner, then we charge a betterment for that lot. And we so, allow it. Yep. That didn't happen. So that's why he has a sewer development fee, which is equal to the most recent Isn't, betterment. Yes. So that's his. That's, that's why he, yeah. so he gets the Oakdale level. So, yes. And so we did considerations, like the guy that's doing off of our Comiset Road, um, that development, he's putting a pipe down the middle of the road that in the future all others can tie if in. If they want to. So we gave him a consent, because work that's gonna benefit us, so we gave but him. But if, we if we were putting this in now, we would be bringing the line to his property. If we were doing the development, absolutely. So the cost of bringing it, so what we're talking about, uh, what realistically would be Fair on this development thing, it would seem to me that we would maybe want to consider at least allowing him that cost differential between the development fee and what the cost for the, that tie-in section there, or is that what we're talking about all together anyhow? We're talking about the connection. So we, if you want to consider, because we've got to be careful because we're going to set precedent. And that, that's okay too. No, but maybe you've got to split it with them. The cost we've we've already, I mean, we've already set precedent by saying we're going to put the line to your property line. I'm not talking about this one here, but you put in a development. You do swim. Oakdale. You brought the, brought the pipe to their property lines. Mm -hmm. So all they had, they brought pipe from their house out to the end of their property line to the street. Uh, yes, either the property was at a house or it was billable. What they exactly, but what I'm saying, but what I'm saying is that, that I understand that. What I'm saying though, it was brought to that point. Yes, sir. Okay, so they paid a betterment, betterment and they brought it out to here. Mm -hmm. So now he's gotta bring it out to here mm -hmm. and over to here. Mm -hmm. If we were to put it in, what was the, the <coughs> Any kind of numbers in there that we could numbers. use something that would be I, a I don't know what to, to consider. I don't know that we yeah, I don't, I don't know, know that we want to, but I'm just it's throwing that out as an option here. However you want to handle it. I, I, again, we have we've had this problem because what happens is the betterment 
is that lot that was not buildable because you can get a septic on there now becomes buildable because it becomes a sewer. Is what? that of a value? That's better than that property. Now that property is usable. He can sell that property and it becomes a profitable piece of land. Without sewer, none of that would have happened. So my question is, is should they pay a betterment or a sewer development fee because they've taken something, it's like in Swiss Beach or in Rose Point, these lots that were purely not buildable. You just couldn't touch them. Now they become buildable. So that's what the betterment's all about. That's what oh, I understand what that's all about. So I, I, understand I understand all of that guy, but the, the point is, when you're talking about Rose Point, or you're talking about this right here, or whatever we do, you brought the pro you bought the pipe to the property line. Because they were Whether it was buildable or not buildable, you brought it to the property no, line. No, it was not buildable. We didn't bring it. And it was buildable now because it had sewer. Sewer in front of the street. Yes. If it was not a buildable lot before we sewered, we would not put a lateral because it's not buildable. We only put laterals on buildable lots okay. before the project. How many people? on an unbuildable lot became buildable and have now connected to sewer. I don't have that number. I can probably so that. the question would be, and how did we charge them for sewer connecting? Sewer not, not betterment, yes. But did we charge them for the cost of taking it from their property line to the sewer line? So we have done that historically for anybody who didn't have a lateral. So it, 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 why would he be any different? That's what I'm saying. The only one that, that comes to my mind that challenged us was Ms. Wisnazi in Rose Point. He had a bunch of lots yep. that challenged us. And this banted for a long time. Um, and, those, they, and a lot of lots are about to be developed. So that was the issue. And when we had these lots, they were non-buildable by building code. So we don't, we don't put sewer to non-buildable lots. We just right. don't. No, I understand. So once sewer, sewer comes by, then that changes the dynamics of that property. Now that property has value. And so the question is, are they being bettered? Well, absolutely. Sewer betters that property because one time they could just use it for, for not buildable, and all of a sudden that property becomes a valuable piece of land. We understand all that. So that's, now that's the problem. Well, I mean, if, if historically we, we have charged the homeowner was responsible for bringing the line from the house directly to the sewer line, and if that's historically what we've done, why would it be any different here other than he's going to a force main? He's going to a no, gravity. Gravity. So, gravity. so to me, it makes no difference. It makes, right. We've done it before with other people who have taken a non-lateral property and turned it into a sewer, sewered piece of property. Yes, they paid so, for all and they were better. They, they so, uh, so historically, we have done it. So why would we make an exception here? We wouldn't, and that's why I caught the exception. Okay. Somebody said the exception. We've made exceptions for the guy in Camisa who was putting a down for a bunch of houses. Well, yeah. And that's the only exception. So in this case, we make no exception. So that's what I'm saying. Because uh, right. he's the only one that benefit, benefit from one. it. The ones down at, was it Pleasant? they would have the possibility of having different users tie into that one line, but this one is solely, solely one that's right. owner. That's it. Okay, it's okay. So that's, so that's the difference. And I, I would think we should be as consistent as we can be that well, I, uh, he I'm not gets trying to change what the yeah. consistency. I'm just trying to say, find out whether or not we are consistent. That's why the question, because if we're doing, doing things because they bettered your house because they put the pipe there, and you paid a betterment fee, uh, but you didn't have any other than across your property to tie in. Is there a difference here? Are we playing a different game on this? And it doesn't seem to me like we are. So it seems to me that uh, the betterment fee stands. I just want, I told him I would ask him, so I, I yep. wanted to bring it up. Yep. But that's, so I need permission to tie this piece of property in. Uh, yeah. All you need, all you're looking for is permission to tie the property in. We're not looking for any dollar. No, nope, I'm just looking for it to give him permission to tie into sewer. Okay. That's all I'm looking for. I have a motion. Can I have the address? Zero Swiss Beach is what we have. That's going to change once the town identifies it. Let me let me make sure I understand this. All right. So if you were putting in sewer down a street, and every time you went by a buildable lot, you would leave a lateral connection. That is correct. And then they would pay a betterment fee and it would be their responsibility to tie in. That is correct. Okay, so this wasn't a buildable lot, so we didn't leave a lateral. That is correct. Now it is a buildable lot. Yeah, we should we should incur no expense of that. No. 
Okay, I just want to make sure I understood it. I have a motion. I have a motion that we approve the tie-in of Zero Swiss Beach to the gravity line on Swiss Beach Road. Second. All in favor? Three, Aye. Okay, three zero zero. <coughs> uh, Sandy. One. I expect you to fill in for Donna. Oh, then Just I a moment. Our next meeting is the 7th of March, 6.30, in this same room. Donna Sub. I make a motion we adjourn at 7.35. Second. All in favor. Okay, I've got a couple of signings here. Sandy, one for you.